At exactly this time, last night on this show, we reported that the Dow Jones Industrial Average had hit its highest point ever. Yesterday was the first time ever that the Dow had closed over 15,000, which is a remarkable achievement for that collection of numbers. Uh, it had never been that high ever. Even more remarkable, though, it turns out maybe it wasn't a fluke, or at least it wasn't a one-day fluke, because today the Dow went up even further, and it stayed up above 15,000, so we have not only hit the 15,000 milestone, we are staying above it. And whether or not you care about the stock market or think that is an important economic measure of either the stock market as a whole or of economic behavior as a whole, it is undeniably a new high. A landmark achievement. And on the day that the stock market hit that new high, that landmark achievement, conservatives who find themselves on the mailing list of the group Citizens United, uh, yes, the same group from the Supreme Court case, conservatives who have signed up to receive Citizens United emails got this email from the group in their inbox yesterday. Subject line, Obama's latest screw up may lead to impeachment. Impeachment, click, open. Dear concerned reader, fearing the very worst, the nation's super rich are unloading their stocks at an alarming rate. The super rich are unloading their stocks because Obama has wrecked the stock market. So on the day the stock market went through the roof and crossed 15,000 for the first time ever, subscribers to the Citizens United mailing list received this damning indictment of the Obama presidency and how it has tanked the market. You see what this communist, socialist, Marxist president Obama has done to sink the market. You have to impeach him now. He's done it on purpose. I think Progress is the one who noticed the timing of this appeal sent out to this email list. But the timing irony of this one really does just put an exclamation point on what is always true about these things which is their resistance to factual confrontation, right? So yeah, apparently there is a right-wing conspiracy theory that President Obama is tanking the stock market on purpose as a way of destroying capitalism. Against that conspiracy theory, the record high achievement of the stock market under President Obama is just no barrier to making that claim. For the birthers, no fact, no birth certificate, no birth announcement in the local paper could ever disprove for them the self-evident conspiracy of the president's birth being faked. From our conspiracy theory clearinghouse friends at World Net Daily, which is where Rick Santorum works now. He came in second in the Republican presidential primary, now works at World Net Daily. Uh, over at World Net Daily, nothing could ever disprove to them their conspiracy that they uncovered to hide the fact that President Obama is not only secretly gay, but President Obama was secretly gay married, even before everybody knew there was such a thing as gay marriage, and he killed all his gay boyfriends, obviously. So sure, to you, the facts may appear otherwise about President Obama, but over at World Net Daily, they have proved this one to their own satisfaction, using photos and things and photos of things. Is this stuff crazy? Yes, of course it is crazy, but it feels great, doesn't it? Ideologically, it's just comforting to kind of wrap yourself up in this stuff. And there is a market for this stuff because of it. And the market for this stuff does not stop at the fringe. And watching that fringe weave itself into the mainstream of Republican politics has been one of the most important ideological hallmarks of the Obama years. And in that spirit, I want to take a moment here to give some unsnarky and serious kudos to Laura Ingram, uh, who is a conservative talk radio host, but one who I think sometimes does a very good job. And last week she had on her show Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe. He was pushing one of the most recent conservative conspiracy theories that the Obama administration is buying as much ammunition as they can get their hands on so there's none left for the rest of us. See, that's how they're really going to disarm us, by taking away all the bullets. Then the Obama government can wage unopposed violent war on the disarmed populace of the United States. Open your eyes, sheeple! But in hosting Senator Inhofe to spell all this out, Laura Ingram, the talk show host, God bless her, actually asked the senator some useful follow-up questions to try to get him to explain exactly how this conspiracy works. Listen. So what are they going to do if they want to if they want to violate our Second Amendment rights? Uh, do it with ammo. Can you explain this to me? What, what do they need it for? Well, they don't. That's the point. Then, but people. And, had, uh, I mean, but but it had been purchased before Obama. 
by the by well, the yeah, not no, not these numbers now, Laura. Not these numbers. And the best evidence of that is look what happened to the 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 supply. The supply is gone, and where did they go? The supply. Some of it, of course, people knowing that we have up. a president who wants to take away. Yeah, they're buying it up, but not to those proportions. Now I know this for a fact because I know the people that uh, are you know are, are concerned about this, and and so so it, it, there's no downside if I'm wrong on this. The last part of this, I feel like I want to preserve it in Lucite and make a plaque out of it. And when I get, then I want to give it out to people as an award. He says, I know this for a fact because I know that people are concerned about this. And so, you know, there's no downside if I'm wrong. It's perfect. But this is not just something that is hatched from the mind of Senator James Mountain in Hoff of Oklahoma. It's not just something he says on conservative talk radio to get people all excited, even if he does occasionally confuse the host. Senator Inhofe has introduced legislation based on this conspiracy theory. It's called the Ammunition Management for More Obtainability Act of 2013. Among other things, it would prohibit the federal government from purchasing or possessing at any one time more rounds of ammunition than the monthly average of the number of rounds of ammunition purchased by the covered agency during the period beginning on January 1, 2001 and ending on December 31, 2009. Oh, one to oh nine. In other words, the Obama administration will henceforth be disallowed from buying any more ammunition than the Bush administration did. How terrifying would it be if the first black president bought more bullets than the previous white president? We have to stop that from happening, America. Today, the other Republican senator from Oklahoma, Senator Tom Coburn, withdrew at the last minute his proposed legislation that is also based on the conspiracy theory that the Obama administration is buying up all the ammo. Senator Coburn's legislation would have created a federal registry for federally owned guns and ammunition. It's a federal registry, but only for the guns and ammo owned by the federal government. When Senator Coburn started getting asked why exactly he wants to start tracking government guns and ammo, <clears throat> Senator Coburn withdrew the legislation today saying it was, quote, a show of goodwill. Every time there's a big event in the country now, even if it's a seemingly totally apolitical event, the political reaction on the right, you can see it at work, goes very quickly to the question of whether it could possibly be an Obama administration conspiracy. It just comes with the territory these days. It's been woven into the way that the right wing approaches even day-to-day -day news. It's how the right wing thinks about things. So like when the Boston Marathon bombing happened, the story for the right and for some members of the Republican Party in Congress was not that the Boston Marathon was bombed. The real story there, the real story we ought to be talking about there is the Boston Marathon bombing conspiracy and scandal. Three days after the Boston bombing, before the suspects were caught, before the city of Boston was under that lockdown, just days after the bombing, Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano testified before a House committee, House Committee on Homeland Security. It was a hearing that was supposed to be about the department's budget. But because of what was going on in Boston and around the country and concern about Boston, the secretary ended up answering questions about the investigation into the bombing or she tried to, when she could make sense of the questions, which proved to be difficult in the case of South Carolina Republican Congressman Jeff Duncan. Congressman Duncan seemed to be trying to make the case that the Obama administration was deporting someone who should, they should not be deporting for, well, for reasons that made no sense, at least to Janet Napolitano. We've got this guy who was there. Uh, we know he was there. He was arrested, or what arrested was detained in the hospital, covered with blood. He was at the scene, and yet we're going to deport him. So we're well, going to remove I, him. If from, I might, we're going to remove him from the scene. I am unaware of anyone who is being deported for national security concerns at all related to Boston. I don't know where I'm not that. Not saying it's related to Boston, but he is being deported. No, I, I like I said uh, again. He, I don't even think. Uh, uh, he was technically a person of interest or a suspect. That was a wash. Wouldn't you agree with me that it's negligent for us as American administration to deport someone who was reportedly at the scene of the bombing um, and we're going to deport him not to be able to question him anymore? Is that not negligence? That, I'm not going to answer that question. It is so full with misstatements and misapprehensions that it's just not worthy of an answer. Obviously, she's hiding something, right? For clarity, let's turn to where the congressman got this conspiracy theory in the first place. Let's turn to Glenn Beck. 
Janet Napolitano yesterday was asked about the Saudi national and his pending deportation. She refused to answer. Why was the president meeting with somebody unscheduled earlier this week? A Saudi official. Who is this Saudi man who was in the hospital, given a new international cell phone, and apologized to, according to him, in Saudi press? Who is he, I wonder? Why would anyone linked to the bombings be deported? Let me just say this to those at the highest echelons of government that know the tagging system. They know all about Events, not files, events. Let me send this message very clear. We know who this Saudi national is. You have until Monday. We have information on who this man is. And listen to me carefully in your little event world. We know he is a very bad, bad, bad man. I know that doesn't make any sense to you right now, but on Monday, it will. That was Friday, April 19th. Then the Monday after that passed. Does it still not make much sense? That's okay. But I can tell you, it apparently involves something about Michelle Obama and visiting a person in the hospital, and maybe he was from Saudi Arabia, and maybe he was the real bomber, and maybe it was a huge cover-up of who really was responsible for the bombing, and Michelle Obama personally was protecting that person because maybe the White House arranged the bombing of the marathon for political purposes that obviously are too obvious to have to understand. If that, that is the theory. Glenn Beck, you have until Monday, and then it will all be exposed. Remember right before the election, the reaction on the right to the unemployment rate going under 8%? Obviously, the answer cannot be, yay, the unemployment rate is dropping. And it can't be, yeah, this might be good for the country, but we on the right see this as bad for us politically because it makes the president not look so bad. That would be a normal political reaction. In today's right wing, the reaction was that there had to have been a conspiracy by the Obama administration to rig the unemployment rate for political purposes. The same congressman, Jeff Duncan, who asked Janet Napolitano those incomprehensible questions about the real bomber and the Boston bombing conspiracy scandal cover-up, that same congressman has also now sponsored legislation that would get rid of the unemployment rate. It would effectively eliminate the unemployment rate and any measure of economic growth or the size of the economy by prohibiting the Census Bureau from gathering the information that is used to compile economic information, including the unemployment rate. Because, hey, who needs that? And besides, that gives them less to manipulate for political purposes. Today in Congress, the attack on the diplomatic mission at Benghazi in Libya, the attack that killed four Americans. Today, the line from the Republicans in Congress was that that was not something that should be seen as an attack that is something that should be seen as a conspiracy and a scandal. This investigation is perhaps the most organized, concerted effort that House Republicans have made on anything in Congress since they took control of the House. They have voted to repeal Obamacare 39 times. They just announced that well, there will be a 40th vote to do that next week because you know why not. But in terms of working on their own ideas, the Benghazi hearing is pretty much it. This is the most ambitious thing they have done. And the idea here is that this was not an attack on the U.S. What happened in Benghazi should be seen as a political conspiracy engineered by the Obama administration and maybe hopefully by Hillary Clinton, but maybe only if she's going to run for president. Yeah, the, the attack in Benghazi was engineered by the administration because somehow it was good for them. So if President Obama is not going to be impeached because he tanked the stock market, he will definitely be impeached because of Benghazi. Or actually, he might, he, you know what, he'll resign because of Benghazi. That'll be perfect. As the information and facts begin to come out, it will become so obvious that there was a concerted and very, very deliberate attempt to mislead this country and its people to lie to Congress as well as to you and I believe that before it's all over this president will not fill out his full term can't exactly explain how it's gonna happen but I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen it's magic if you say Benghazi enough if you teach enough people who only type with a cap locks key on Twitter to spell Benghazi that H is really hard then eventually President Obama will be impeached or he will resign. 
and then we will get all of our ammunition back and we'll finally get to meet his gay husband.